Okie dokie, let's see if I got this right. We're trying to go live with our fancy new system. So just give me one minute, guys, to make sure that I am everywhere I want to be. We are good to go. So um, I can't believe we did this. This is going to be fun. You're going to watch me totally geek out over all things video. And today we are talking about money thought. How do we think about money? Because it starts up here. And what comes out, we need to we need to be right between the ears for what comes out um, so that we can come across to the people that we're talking about money with, asking for money from, or giving money to in a place of power. And um, if we can be empowered about all things money, which, you know, let me just back the bus up. First of all, I'm gonna introduce myself with my fancy new system. I'm Dr. Jody Dinnerman. I'm the founder and creator of All Things Soup School. And let me just take a minute and talk to you guys about what's happening with Soup School. If you want to check out more, just go to stafflesspractice.com. Um, we have an online school for women in practice who don't have staff or are looking to automate their systems. And I'm not going to talk a lot about Soup School because I want to get to our practice practicals content. Every Tuesday morning, I feed the community with the topic of the week. And this morning's topic of the week, the whole month is going to be about money because we're moving into the spring. We're moving into abundance consciousness. We're moving into growth. And um, this morning, I want to talk about how we think about money. And you know, I sat down this morning, I scheduled out some time to be at my desk and go over accounts receivables for the practice and just kind of double click on the financial flow for my practice because we have to schedule that time in. If we let it go back burner, back burner, back burner, we're never going to get clean with our money stuff. And um, I'm telling you, after 21 years in practice, I still get a lump in my throat. Like, what am I going to find this morning? I don't want to go into a mess. I don't want to get into overwhelm. And that fear can very easily put us um, in this place of disconnection with double clicking on the things that matter really. Th these are really important pieces to having a healthy practice, looking at your financial flow, figuring out how to talk about your fee system. And I'm telling you, this is one of the things, unless you have a background in business and you've had very strong role models growing up, this is one of the things that we see our doctors and our, our practice owners struggling with most. And we see them struggling with asking for what they deserve to be in fair exchange. And we also see them struggling with um, being in a place where they feel like they deserve to be, um, you know, paid for their services. I can't tell you how common it is in the circles that I am familiar with within my profession where, oh, don't worry about it. Today's on me or um, I'll just give you 50% of today. And why do we go there? So it takes years and years and years of practice to get comfortable with this stuff. And we might have to go to a place when we're new in practice where we're acting as if we can be shaking on the inside. And if you're an empath, path, you have to remember that you shaking on the inside doesn't have to come across to your practice member, the person sitting in front of you. If you're really nervous to talk about money, but you're breathing and you have practiced it and you know that you're worth what you're asking for, the person sitting in front of you doesn't need to know how nervous you are. Or you may be one of the people who says, this is a really scary thing for me to talk about. I'm just going to talk about the elephant in the center of the room. I'm not really good at asking for fair exchange. If it feels good to you to go there, then go there. Call it. Say to the person sitting in front of you, okay, we're going to talk about money and I get a little nervous when we do this. So just please um, breathe with me while we're talking about this. Does that sound good? I also want to recommend that as you're thinking about money, you think of money 
Um, you can replace the word money with the word energy. Money and energy equal the same thing. And if you're out of exchange in either one, your energy or your money, you go into a deficit. And when you go into a deficit, it's like uh, the universe sees red and you start attracting all of these things that adhere to a deficit. As soon as you start to change your thought about con your financial consciousness thought process, you're going to see that the things that come across your path start to change too. They're less chaotic. They have more order to them. They're more positive when it comes to fair exchange. Whether we're talking about people, situations, opportunities, the answer is yes. As soon as we clean up what goes on between our ears when it comes to money. So how do we do that? How do we, um, I think that the number one thing is to be very clear about, um, what is fair exchange for your services? If I am offering a massage and I'm offering massage, an hour of massage in my part of the world for $30 for that hour because I'm afraid to ask for more, that doesn't feel like fair exchange to me. And as I'm doing my work and I feel like I'm not in fair exchange, it's going to affect the experience. It's also going to the affect the experience of the person who I'm giving that service too. However, um, you know, do, let me just, by the way, Dr. Shaylin Osborne gives us in soup school a whole course on how to backtrack into your fee. How much money do you need to be asking for, for your service to live your life in your ideal? How do you get to that number? You know, staying within the statutes of the law, within the reasonable and customary fees for your area, how do you know if you should be on the low end of the scale or the high end of the scale for the services that you offer. And um, as long as you've done that work, as long as you've double clicked on, I deserve to be in fair exchange with the service that I'm giving with the energy that I'm putting out, it's going to feel so much easier and so much cleaner for the request for money and the thought process to move into energy, the request for money. It's going to feel so much easier to you, but you have to do the work. You have to play with what should my fee be? Why should it be that number? Create a system around asking for it. And then when you're sitting in that situation, even if you need to call out the elephant in the room, it feels so much easier in your heart space. It feels so much easier in your body so that um, you come across it as uh, somebody who's in a position of empowerment, asking for that fair exchange. When um, I was interviewing Dr. Barbara Eaton to be part of our soup school experience, I asked her what her one-on-one -on -one rate for coaching was. And she told me it, and it was a high dollar amount. And my response to her was, good for you. Good for you for knowing what your worth is. Many people give their services away and they undervalue it, or they'll even give it away for free. Guys, it's not a good idea. It's never a good idea because it says to the universe, I'm not worth fair exchange. And again, as I just went over, that's what's going to be backing you up is that lack of fair exchange. So my challenge for you this week, as we move into a beautiful, it's almost spring guys, it's right around the corner. And as we move towards this growth time for, especially for where I am in the world, I'm in New Jersey, everything's starting to warm up. I just looked at the weather forecast. We're gonna have a day of 60 degrees next week. Um, I want you to start thinking about how can we clean up our thought process around money? What action steps do we need to take on a weekly, daily, quarterly, yearly basis to get it right with how we think about money? Um, you know, we think about all of the wording around money. I can't afford it. Um, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, I'm, I'm not a bank. Sometimes those words will come out of my mouth when I'm talking to my kids. And 
it will still happen. I will still think in this way because this is how I was brought up. This is how I was conditioned to think about money. So it's still rooted in there. It's deep in the back of my brain. And every time the wording comes out, the lack of abundance consciousness around all things money goes from thought to voice, right? What I'll do is I'll say the word delete out loud. So I'll say, I'll be shopping with a friend and I'll see something that I'll really want. And I'll hear the words come out of my mouth. It's almost like in slow motion. I can't afford it. And I'll say delete. And the person who's standing next to me might think I'm crazy, but I need to delete that thought process from coming out and I need to say it. I'm choosing not to spend my money or my energy on that right now. If you're somebody who is very uncomfortable with the idea of money, asking for money, thinking about money, I invite you to replace the word money with energy. It might take the edge off for you. I also wanna speak for a minute to the people who are new in practice. I promise you, you are going to have, I promise you, you are going to have enough practice with this piece that you are going to find a place where you're comfortable asking about money as long as you do the work. And the work looks like starting to identify where your subluxations are or where your stuck points are when it comes to money. Where did those stuck points come from? And what do you need to do to clean it up? Start up here and then it will naturally flow from a good place out through here. So that's money thought. That's where we're going with starting to think in abundance consciousness about all things money. We've got really good things coming up this week. Um, we have a webinar tomorrow morning. If you want to know how to turn your phone into an automated system to just rock your practice while you're sitting on the baseball field being baseball mom, you can do both at the same time. You really can. Um, check out the comments below. I'm going to put a link for that webinar. And then we are talking to Dr. Janice Hughes on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. She's going to talk all about how we should think about money, how we should talk about money in practice. The woman is a rock star. I'm so excited to have her here with us. And then we've got really great stuff next week. Dr. Robin Hale is going to come in and talk about compliance and practice. And then we also have another webinar um, next Friday for um, turning your phone into an automated system. So let me know if you have any questions. Reach out to me. If you guys want to text me, you can do that too. Go ahead and text me. My phone is right here. I'm ready to answer your questions. If you want to jump on the phone with me for a good 15, 20 minutes and talk about how what we're doing in our little nook of the world can serve you and your practice, text me. We're going to get something set up. And remember, you want to start up here. You want to get the thoughts moving correctly up here so that it can come out correctly out here. I'm loving you from here. Have a beautiful Tuesday.